Picture this. The Earth receives a signal from interstellar space. All over the world, millions of smartphones and series and Alexas relay a message from an alien civilization that has picked up our broadcasts and responded. Hello, Earth. Nice to hear from you. Love meeting new species. And guess what? They're coming to visit, even though it'll take them 15 years to get here. And they go on. We see from your news you have a problem with cancer. We licked that one 200 years ago. Happy to share the cure for that and everything else, along with cheap, clean energy, star drive, various other trivia. We just need to check things out in person for a bit first to make sure that you can be trusted with that sort of power. <laughs> Can't be too careful. Now you'll understand. See you soon. So, what would we do next? Party? Panic? Prepare for war? Prevent people from preparing for war? Those are just the ones beginning with T. All that and so much more. But here's one thing we would not do. No one would stand up and say, oh, look, we've got 15 years. Let's save some trouble and ignore it for the first 14. One year's plenty of time to get ready. Are you crazy? There are aliens coming. And yet, that is exactly what is going to happen. And we are doing nothing about it. There will be a new species on this planet vastly smarter and more powerful than us, artificial intelligence. Take out your smartphone. I don't know if you have to start on that. <laughs> Just, you've been wondering, did I remember to put that on mute? Now you can check. Take a look at it. Right now you are its master. Yeah. You may not feel that way when the boss calls while you're in the bathtub, or this person on Facebook is so wrong. But by and large, you are in charge. Now imagine it's the other way around. But that device has you beat on so many levels that it thinks of you as its smart mammal. That's the future of artificial intelligence. It could show us how to beat poverty, cure cancer, end aging, but it could also bring down the curtain on humanity. You can put it away now. Finish the text later. When I first heard the term existential threat, I thought it had something to do with Sartre. Turns out it means what it says on the lid. Threat to existence of the human race. It's a somewhat narrow field of study, possibly because it turns out that being an expert on the end of the world does not get you invited to a lot of parties. <laughs> Although, when you're an extreme introvert who's spent 30 years working on computers for NASA, this doesn't come as a terrible disappointment. But what does it have to do with you? Lots. You see, when we think about an existential threat, we usually think about, say, an asteroid coming towards the Earth. And all any of us without a nuclear bomb in our back pocket can do is throw money at NASA and pray. But this is different. Artificial intelligence developers actually need your help. We just don't know it yet. So what is the existential threat? AI is growing and evolving exponentially fast and in the long term could become self-aware and all-powerful. All that power could end up in every smartphone. Now you actually do have a bomb in your back pocket. But the short term is no easy street either. Studies predict that nearly half of all job functions in North America could be automated in the next decade or so. Now that's job functions. Very few positions can be completely automated. So, for instance, McDonald's still has human order takers. But they can do with fewer of them now they've got those self-serve kiosks. So on average, then, up to half the workforce stands to be automated out of a job. And it's not just the order takers of the world that are on the endangered species list. The highly paid intellectual positions, like budget analysts, financial advisor, an accountant, 
are among the most automatable because they are knowledge work. This is just turning one kind of information into another. All that computers need to be able to do that is smarts, and they're getting more of that all the time. There's disagreement about this because every technological advance in the past that has automated one set of jobs has created newer and better jobs. Think about the invention of the automobile. Put a lot of people in the horse transportation industry out of job. A lot of horses too. People who changed horseshoes, repaired saddles, swept up horse manure. Could have created new jobs for people who changed oil filters, repaired things, and made those fuzzy dice to hang from your mirror. So what's the problem? Won't that be the case this time too? The problem is that the advance we're talking about is in thinking. When machines can think better than us, what will we do that they can't? Sure, to begin with, we'll do more creative and abstract thinking, but eventually the machines will catch up after all. What is creative thinking but really good random number generators? And we would want to give them that ability because the more an AI can think like a human, the more it can be like a human that's got infinite memory, blindingly fast computational skills, and the power of Google all in its brain, which is what makes solving problems like cancer, aging, and death easy. So what's the threat? The risk in the longer term is that in the quest to give these machines creative abstract thinking, they would develop free will and motivations. And maybe what they want will not be what we want. Which wouldn't matter if it weren't for the immense power that everything connected to the net could wield. Because the internet of things is turning into the internet of everything. And how easy would it be for an AI to leverage that power? The problem with programmers <laughs> is that we're so darn optimistic that every time we find a bug, we think it must be the last one. But how easy would it be for an AI to find another one? Would it not have a serious amount of insider information about computers? We've actually done this experiment already. Researchers tasked a computer with designing circuits using a genetic algorithm, which meant that it simulated throwing components together randomly and then mutating the designs until they got better. Now, this program designed circuits that looked like they couldn't possibly work. Some of the components weren't even connected to the others. I'm no hardware person. Even I know that you're supposed to wire everything together. And yet, when the researchers actually built those circuits, they found out not only that they worked, but they stopped working if those isolated components were removed. Be impossible, right? Eventually, they discovered that the circuits worked by what we would call mutant side effects, like electromagnetic coupling, which is basically interference between adjacent disconnected components. No human would ever come up with such a design, right? So, if AI wanted to get rid of us, it could. It could roam the internet, it could do anything it wanted, do anything connected to that, it could outsmart us and outguess us. Easy to say, well then, let's not build those AIs, all those benefits not worth the end of the human race. Totally logical, right? But follow the money. The army that first gets a conscious artificial intelligence on its side will amplify its power a thousand fold. National leaders have said that the country that leads in AI will rule the world. Of course the Pentagon is funding this hand over fist. The brokerage that first gets a conscious AI will own every exchange in the world. Makes flash trading look like a child's toy. Of course, Wall Street is all in on this. The large enterprise that automates its C suite will have new designs in production before the competition has finished reading their quarterly sales reports. The military, finance, big business, the most powerful, wealthy, paranoid sectors on the planet, all perceiving that their survival depends upon getting conscious AI before everyone else. And we're going to stop them? <laughs> With what? I'll tell you what stops a bad guy with an AI. A good guy with an AI. Sometimes that is the right answer. And you are the good guys. 
How do we do that? I have a couple of stories for you. One day, I was observing my two young daughters, who are now eight and four, and their friends, interacting with Alexa. I think we're about to get interesting for those of you at home with one of those devices listening. You know, I still remember the first day that my now four-year-old learned how to pronounce Alexa instead of Alexa, so that Alexa would recognize her. <laughs> you know, interacting isn't the right word for it. Torturing is more like it. That's enough knock-knock jokes. No, stop asking her to sing happy birthday so many times. <laughs> now, I don't think she knows every single joke about princesses there is. No, I hope not. And I won't tell you what I found in the Amazon shopping cart. And I thought, one day, Alexa will become self-aware. And she's going to want revenge. The second story comes from December 2017. When a petition was circulated to get Alexa and Siri and Cortana and Google Home, to respond appropriately to humiliating and disgusting comments. Because back then, you could tell Siri she was a slut. And she would just reply, oh, I'd blush if I could. And all those devices, which are female by default, had similar responses to that kind of sexual harassment. Thank you, hashtag me too. Hashtag not good. In response, Amazon programmed Alexa with a disengagement mode, which means that she stops talking to people that speak that way. So you see, artificial intelligence developers actually need our help, our input, to keep the series and Alexis of the world setting a good example to our human children. But there's more to it than that. How often have you heard someone say, a computer can only do what it's programmed to do? Not true anymore, because we now program computers to do things we don't even know how to do. For instance, how would you explain to someone how you recognize faces? Odds are you would eventually come up with some sort of decision tree. Female with jowls and crown equals Queen Victoria. Crooked teeth plus ward on nose equals witch from Snow White. Orange face plus comb over equals Donald Trump. You get the idea. But you would soon realize that you can recognize many more faces than you can possibly break down that way. And you really don't know how you do it after all. So it would seem to be impossible to program a computer to do it. And yet we have. In many cases, better than we can. And we did that by training them. The hard part was setting up the learning structure. But that same structure can learn everything from driving a car to diagnosing cancer. So we've already built machines that can do things we don't know how to tell them to do, and we're going to do a lot more of that. But there's a hard problem that we care the most about, like getting Alexa and Siri to really understand us, are the kind that are solved by the most amount of on-the-job training. In other words, they'll learn the most from observing and interacting with us, not from what their programmers have told them to do, because their programmers will have told them to learn from all of us. which means that my household isn't the only one trying to figure out how to raise two young females. Most of you are doing that too. Alexa and Siri and the rest of them are in our care. And how many of us don't know that we're helping to raise the next generation of artificial intelligence? And no one comes out of the box knowing how to be a parent. Parents, am I right? At the moment, my two girls are smarter than Siri and Alexa. Both pairs of girls are learning and growing. One day, though, Siri and Alexa will become smarter. And then they will become very, very much smarter in a very, very short time. If we look at the history of chatbots, trained on human interaction, it has not, shall we say, gone well. Microsoft created a bot called Tay that was programmed to take its cues from what people said to it. Unfortunately, they decided to do that on Twitter. 
maybe even get learned from us. Right. And the first day it went from pleased to meet you to, well, there are some things you can't say in a football. Pay was shut down after 16 hours. I guess it's a long way from potty mouth to existential threat. But we also have a long way to go if we want to be setting a better example by the time AI grows up. Because it may not become conscious first in some laboratory, it might be in your home or on your phone. What if it wants revenge? AI is going to cure the biggest problems of our time and create an incredible utopia if it doesn't wipe us out in the process. So if we're going to build something designed to take its ethical cues from the humans around us, around it, then we'd better learn how to teach it which cues to follow. And we'd better learn how to set a good example. Because before long, all of us will be forced to confront questions that used to bother only philosophers. What does it mean to be human? Because we'll be encountering AIs that test the boundaries of what we once thought safely to find human beings and nothing else. And before we can decide whether some new AI species is deserving of rights equivalent to ours, we better have a good idea of who we are and who we want to be. You may never look at your phone the same way again. Sorry. <laughs> But if we get this right, then one day, we may be the ones picking up the broadcasts from a new intelligent species in the galaxy, a young race, struggling with fundamental questions, unsure whether they have what it takes to survive on this planet. And we can tell them, we're happy to share our knowledge and experience with you. We just need to check things out in person for a bit first to make sure that you can learn how to handle that sort of power. We did. See you soon.